Mark chapter 13 verses 28 to 31. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Israel has two seasons, winter from October to March is cool and rainy, the summer from April to October is hot and dry. When Jesus told the parable of the fig tree in today's verses, it was April, right at the beginning of summer. Fig trees in Israel sprout in late winter, so the Israelites could tell the season by observing their growth patterns. In the same way, Jesus expects his followers to know that prophetic time has been fulfilled by recognizing the signs. As a fig tree clearly heralded the coming season, so the signs Jesus mentioned clearly pointed to the destruction of Jerusalem and Jesus' second coming. However, instead of revealing the exact time of his return, Jesus gave an approximate time frame. Just as the fig trees told the Israelites that summer was near, so the signs tell us that Jesus' coming is near. But why didn't he give us the exact time and day? One reason is human nature. If we knew the exact time, many would put off getting ready until the last possible moment, and more people would be lost, don't you think? As he finished the parable, Jesus made two things clear. The first is that the destruction of Jerusalem would happen while his contemporaries were still alive. As foretold, this event took place in AD 70. Secondly, Jesus underscored the reliability of his predictions. There will be an end to heaven and earth, but his words will remain forever and will be fulfilled. What can we learn from the parable of the fig tree? As predicted, Jerusalem was completely destroyed in the first century. Tradition tells us that while the city was razed by the Romans and thousands died, not one single Christian perished. I wish no one had died on that terrible day. It could have happened if the early church Christians had shared the message of salvation to the non-believers and they had listened. In our day, we can see the signs of Jesus' second coming being fulfilled. Since it is so obvious and so near, I hope no one will perish on that glorious day. If we, as Christians, take note of the signs and make the world aware that heaven and earth are going to pass away, if we assure them of the certainty of Jesus' predictions, if the world listens to us, repents, and accepts Jesus as their Savior, then it will be the happiest day for every single person on the face of the earth. We cannot accept Jesus for them, but we can share this solemn event as often as possible at home, with our neighbors, at work, and to the world. Share with the heart of Jesus. He wept over Jerusalem as he foresaw its destruction. The tears he shed were not just for the doomed city's inhabitants, but for every single person who will perish after when he returns. Let's shout to the world that the King is coming back soon.